Բողջույն եթերում սպորդ զրույսն է և այսօր վա մեր զրուցակիցը հայտնի սպորտային իրավաբան, սարդրապատ վուտբոլային ակումբի նախագաս է Վանկարյանն է։ Վանկարյան բողջույն, գիտեմ, որ տիրապետում եք նաև հայրենին, բայց ավելի As you know, so I come here for a Sardarapat football club that we founded last year in the city of Armavir. And I am here with uh, Eric Asadurian from Racing Club de Lens, French professional club, to, as part of the partnership to see how the club is going, how it's developing, to see the kids, the team, and all the people here in Armenia and Armavir. Um, you have already mentioned about the cooperation between Lens and Sardarapat FC. Uh, how far can it go and what Armenian side can benefit from it? Again, Racing Club de Lens is a, is a French professional football club that has a big history, a big tradition. We're today in the French First League and actually doing very well because we're second in the league right after PSG. Uh, we have a small budget in the league, but the work of this club is very important. And again, the philosophy is really to train their kids, local kids, and the academy is very strong. We know that Rafael Varane, Serge Aurier, Kondogbia, Azar, many players go out from this uh, Lens Academy, trained by Eric Asadurian, that you know. And uh, we want to benefit from their knowledge, the methodology, the training to bring it in Armenia and for the kids of Sardarapat. So I think we can benefit a lot from this knowledge and this methodology. So you told about many similarities because you want to develop academy in Armenia. Like let's talk about Sardarapat project, uh, how the idea came to you to start this project in Armenia, in Armavir, and um, so how it's going right now. You know, first of all, I'm Armenian. So French Armenian, of course, but uh, it's very important for me to participate in the life of uh, Armenia and the development of it. So since 15 years, I'm involved in some uh, development project in Armenia. I founded first when I was a student, a small organization called IO. And uh, we bring here a lot of volunteers to do works in the village with the kids of Armenia around sports and arts and this kind of stuff. So when I start working in football like 10 years ago, and now I'm pretty established with a strong network and a lot of things, I thought that Football may be a very good tool of development for Armenia in general and for the Armenian kids. So that's the way it came to me, the idea of creating a football academy. Because I think we have a very, very big potential in Armenia. The kids are talented, they love football. We are hard workers, people in Armenia in general. And so we have everything. The only thing is for me, the football here is not developed enough in the youth academies. Uh, the Federation, since five years, is doing a great job, I think. I'm very happy to have very good relation with them. They have program for the youth, but again, it's mainly based in Yerevan. So my idea is to be, okay, we're going to participate in that development. I'm going to bring my network, my knowledge, everything I can in Armenia. And there was this opportunity when they renovated the stadium of Armavir, which is a fantastic training center that you have visited already. Uh, I thought, okay, we have a big city here, 50,000 people, a lot of kids, no football club, brand new stadium. So let's take it, bring our French knowledge methodology in terms of football and create this club with a very nice name and history of Sardarapat that should inspire all our kids and fans and community. Yeah, it's a really nice vision. So uh, let's talk about kids a little bit uh, because you have great experience. And of course, uh, when you visit Armenia, uh, you watch them playing, you watch them training. Do you see really uh, talented kids then in uh, future, maybe near future, maybe a little bit far, uh, can play even in League One in France and in Lens FC? I am more than convinced about that because, again, we are... Uh, Human, you know, the kids in Armenia, I'm always saying that because when I was going to Europe, professional club, to try to, to sell this project of come and invest in Armenia, always this was the question, but are the Armenian kids good enough? I'm like, they are kids. They have two legs, two arms, brain. They love football. And I think we're even more talented than most of the people. And we have, most importantly, the mentality, like a fighter mentality. As you know, I'm uh, working with 
top talented football players in Europe. I'm uh, proud to be counsel of Antoine Griezmann since many years. The story of Antoine is very interesting. He was in France a little kid uh, and he had to fight very, very hard every time because everybody was telling him you're not good enough, you're not tall enough, you're not strong enough. But everything he built in his career is because of his brain and his mentality of a fighter. And if you take Antoine Griezmann, born in Armenia 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, he would not have been a professional because there was not the opportunity. So my idea is take this potential, take this mentality and this will to do great things and accomplish great things and just give them the tools. And I'm very, very sure that the Armenian kids will take this opportunity and will go in France, in Europe, in Spain, everywhere. And of course, Lens is, thanks to the partnership that we have with Sardarapat, the privileged path for them to go. Because already, as you know, it's part of the partnership. Some kids of Sardarapat came to Lens for, for training, yeah. trainings. And so the idea is all the kids that will come to our club will have this opportunity to go to Lens directly for some trainings uh, first. And of course, if they're good enough, to sign a contract there and discover the top level football. This is my, my main objective, by the way. Yeah, so, so that's how it works. You give the opportunity, you give the way, you, you show them the way how they should develop and uh, the rest is up to them. So we hope really we will have uh, some good players coming from Sardarapat Academy, uh, thanks to you. Um, yeah, you talked about uh, Armenian national team, former striker Eric Asadurian. We remember his goal against Portugal when he was playing in France. He came to national team, it was really nice. Uh, a little bit more, please, about him, about cooperation with Eric Asadurian. We know that now he's the sports director of the whole academy of Lens. Exactly. Eric was a uh, top striker in League One uh, 20, 25 years ago, maybe 30, I don't remember. But uh, he, he, he was one of the first with Michel Darzakarian, who is also a very, I'm very close to. They came to national team and wear the Armenian uh, shirt for the first time. And actually, he did for 10 years, he was a coach in Excellence Academy. Then he was traveling and being a director in all uh, other top clubs. And he came back three years ago in Lens and he's, as you say, technical sports director of the academy and is very, very well known in France for being one of the top uh, coach for the youth teams. Because again, it's very important to understand that developing youth, young players is different of training a professional team. And so this is the specific knowledge I want to bring here to, to develop local players. Because again, I'm always saying we are 3 million people in Armenia and I don't think it's normal to have only one player at the top level in Europe, which is Enric Mkhitaryan, who is doing we well. scored yesterday. Uh, exactly, and I'm very happy for him. But again, it's not normal, I think, that we have only one representative, ambassador of Armenia within the football world. So my goal really is to help us to have more. About the potential of our players, we'll speak uh, soon, but uh, the question I want to ask, you talked about a very important topic, that it's quite dif different to train professional players and work with young youth players. So I know that many coaches, not only in Armenia, but uh, in the whole world, they try to make result in the, when, with youth players, with young players, uh, when they are like 12, 13 years. I know your vision is quite different. You don't think that it's mo the most important is the result in, uh, when you are like 12 or 13 years, but the development of players. I want to uh, hear about yeah. your vision from you. Exactly. When, you know, I, I bring Eric Asadurian back in Armenia two years ago. It was 20 years he didn't come. The last time was in 98, was it was with national team of Armenia against France, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, and he was looking and auditing, let's say, all the clubs and how we work in Armenia. And that's true. We realized that most of the coach, when you ask them, what is your objective? They all say, we have to win this game. And again, at the professional level, of course, you want to win the games. But in the youth level, you have to get a vision which is further. It's not only the actual result. It's more about, what about this kid? He's a 12 years old kid. How can I bring him to become a professional at 18 years old? And so it's a long-term process, and you have to watch not only the level of the kids today, but the potential 
of this kit, which we'll have in a few years. So it's very different. And if you take, again, the example of Griezmann that I think is here, a lot of example, you take him at 12, 13, 14 years old, he was small, he was weak, and so instead, in front of top strong players of his age, or six months more, he will be weak. And he, can, he may lost the game. But it's not the important, because again, the important is to see what this guy can the accomplish potential. in three, four, five years. And this is really what we're focusing on. So again, we tell our coach, it's very important, don't worry. It's not because you don't win the game at the end of the week, or you don't be champion in U13, U14, U15 at the end of the season that it's not good. This is not what we're going to judge. What we're going to judge is how the young kids coming in our academy are developing and how they evolve and how they progress towards the high level. This is the most important. But of course, if we win, it's good, and we want to win. But it's not the main objective of every day uh, of the academy. That's, that's important to understand. It's really nice vision, and I think that this approach can uh, develop our youth football in Armenia match. So we'll like watch the process. No. And uh, you talked about Antoine Griezmann. Yes, you are like the lawyer, sports lawyer of Antoine Griezmann. For many years you represent him. And um, uh, how is it to work with a top player, you know, that well known in the whole world? The relations and the process, it's very interesting to know from the first hand. Again, I think it's very uh, unique and case by case. Uh, it depends a lot of the personality also of the people. Antoine is someone very simple, which is amazing, very humble. He can be a world champion, a top player, a uh, star, not walking in the street without being uh, uh, <laughs> approached by everybody, etc. But he remain a very normal person. As I always say, they are normal person, normal people like you and me. And so at the end, when you know them, you just see that they have feelings, they have doubts, they have dreams, they have a lot of things. And it's a pleasure for me to, to, to work with them and, uh, and to develop that. But uh, I get a lot of inspiration of their story again, and their professionalism and the objective to put this in, for example, the academy. When you look at them, they're very, very professional. They're not here like that. There is reason. There is a very, very hard work behind the scenes. Sleeping well, training, eating well, uh, always, always, always trying to be better. It's not like, oh, I'm a world champion, I stop. No, they work very hard and every day harder. And that's why he succeed, for example. And this is something for me which is very inspirational and I want to, first for, I think, our life in general, but also for the kids in Sardarapat FC, I want to, to bring them that. And for sure, one day I will uh, bring him here and, and uh, it will be a pleasure to, to show what we accomplish here. But just waiting a little bit for, for, for us to have a more uh, structured accomplishment. Yeah, that say. was my next question. So <laughs> we saw that Griezmann even uh, made a like comment in uh, Instagram of Sardar Pat FC. So it would be, of course, great not only for the kids but for our country, for our football to have a star like that. And uh, as I understood from your words, it's a possible case. Of course, we want, we hope. I have to. I want to to for him to discover Armenia. Armenian I think he is, is willing to. Right now it's difficult because professional players also, we don't realize they have very, very few days of holidays within a season. So they enjoy it a lot, but uh, hopefully one day I will, for sure. Uh, you talked also about one important topic, that the hard work always pays, always pays off like in case of Griezmann. And we can say the same about Henrik Mkhitaryan because he was also approaching uh, football very professionally, starting from a very young age and now he scored the goal in the semi-finals of Champions League. It's, of course, it's a great achievement. Uh, do you see in other Armenian players that uh, even maybe they are already playing in uh, national team? For example, we can mention Eduard Spertian. He's very close to moving to League One. Even uh, we know that so uh, some clubs are interested in him, not only in France, but in Spain and in Italy. So your opinion about Spertian and uh, can he achieve the same thing? Do he has the same potential? For me, Eduard Spersian is even with a way bigger potential. He's the best player that I have seen from Armenia within the last 10, 15 years. Uh, he's a very, very nice player. I love him. Uh, I know, I saw, I read that there were some interests from clubs. I'm very sceptical about that because I know how it works with the media world, the agents, the rumors. 
always see Real Madrid, etc. I'm not that sure about that, but uh, I would be very happy. And for sure, he has the level to come in Europe. Uh, I could be also helping him to come in Europe. I would be very happy, actually. But uh, yeah, that's part of the plan. And he has to come and he has to show to the world that Armenia is, uh, has good talent. Even if his case is very is a bit special, because as you know, he was not trained in Armenia, but in Russia. So it's also a bit different. But I'm very happy to see that these guys that had opportunity to play for other country came to Armenia and uh, representing our nation uh, to the world. It's good. Yeah, and even if he was not trained in Armenia, as he said, his heart told him to come to Armenia to join. So that's that's a really nice case. And he's also a humble person because I know him personally. Very humble, very good person. Uh, you were telling the same about Griezmann. So I think this is also very important for the yeah. player where go, while going up. Uh, remaining a good person. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe we'll see him in France also, and we'll, maybe you'll we'll help. You talked about also Michel Terzakarian that you have good relations with. Um, so we know that he represented Armenian national team in 90s, and the rumors say also that he was very close to became, become the head coach of Armenian national team recently. So do you know about this topic? Uh, was he really in negotiations with Federation or no? And uh, what went wrong if yes? I know the topic well because I'm his counsel, <laughs> so <laughs> I know it. Uh, of course, I know also uh, very well uh, the people from Federation, so there was an opportunity, we discussed it, but uh, I think Michel uh, has to still a very, very big career in clubs at top level in Europe to accomplish maybe before the the time. I think his heart is Armenian, he's born in Yerevan, he's very attached to Armenia. Uh, I think honestly that one day he could come to become the national team coach, it would be great for him and for Armenia. But I think the timing, you know, it's a lot about timing and this kind of stuff. And uh, I think the timing is not good right now, but it will one day for sure, I hope. So we also hope because he can give much to, uh, I think, our football and our national team. But now he's succeeding in Ligue 1, so we're happy for him. He's succeeding uh, very well. Very well. Yeah. He took Montpellier in a very bad situation and just did a lot of victory in a row that makes the club uh, staying in Ligue 1 for now. So, yeah, it's, uh, he showed again that he's a great coach. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk about Sardarapat FC more because, okay, we talked about the academy, your vision, how to develop this academy, but we want uh, also to know in your plans, do you have uh, to have like Sardarapat in Armenian first league, maybe Premier League, like to have a professional team? Exactly. And very, very good question. And a lot of people in Armenia asking every time this. So yeah, of course, of course, Sardarapat is not only an academy, it's a club. So it's going to become a professional club with a senior team entering in first league. Uh, we plan to do that for next season. I mean, not this upcoming one, but the season 24, 25. Uh, the only thing is, I think it's important for me when you build a project and you have a vision, we're not here only to do something and disappear. We're not here to have a strategy and change it the season after. We're here very on the long term. And uh, our founding supporters, Joseph Ugorlian, who is the owner of uh, Racing Club de Lens and also other clubs, have the chance also to have as a founding supporter Mr. Nubar Afeyan, who is a great person, working a lot for Armenia. These kind of people supporting us are not just here to do a little project and go out. They are here for building something strong. And I think when you build something strong, you have to go step by step. It's important. So that's why we didn't do everything at the same time. And also because the philosophy of the club, of Sardarapat, is to have Armenian players and locally trained players. So the idea is we open the club now. We have already a buffer league team. They will be stronger next season. And after that, we're going to create the team with the core team of the player would be our player that we have trained with our methodology, our vision, our values. And I think this is something very important. But to answer to it, yes, Sardarapat FC will have a professional team very soon. And hopefully it will do well in the next future. But again, with a very strong Armenian identity and local identity. You are a very uh, well-known uh, football lawyer in France, let's say so. Not only football, but sports lawyer. Uh, how important are the law and the regulations in today's football and which part of it 
uh, you evaluate and enjoy the most in your work? Uh, the, the good part of my work is it's very diversified. You know, we can be counsel, we can be negotiators, we can be fighting in court, uh, in arbitration, uh, a lot of international because I work in France, but also a lot in Spain, in England, in Switzerland, where there is the court of arbitration for sport, for example, and also the variety of clients because I work a lot for players, but also for agents and also for clubs, sometimes for federations. So this, this diversity that I like and every day is a new day and every moment can be different and I think this Not is very routine. interesting. Not a routine at all, but also it has to be clear that uh, since two years, honestly, a uh, lot of my part of my days are uh, to Sardarapat FC, which I'm not doing for uh, uh, business, but uh, as a volunteer, as also spending money, investing in the club, uh, because I think this is important to, to give back. Okay, life give me something. As you say, I'm in France, I'm a lawyer, I have successful players and people that make me in a good situation, so I think it's very important for me and for the history, for my parents, grandparents to give back to Armenia. So I give a lot of my time to that and uh, I'm willing to do more and more because again, I think Sardarapat will grow, will take more and more time and more and more space. That's a really nice patriotic approach. So we're glad to hear that from you. And um, you know, uh, I want to talk also about your hobbies. Uh, I know that you like to surf. Uh, it's one of your passions in life. So tell us about your hobbies also, please. Well, there is not a lot of, of Armenia. If not, I would have developed if we had some sea and ocean and waves. But uh, yeah, part of my time is doing that and disconnecting a little bit of this world because again, being a sports lawyer, being founder of Sardapat, being all that is kind of tense, intense, stressful, a lot of things going on. So I think it's very important sometimes to have this kind of disconnection of, uh, of this and to just like be feeling well and have all the energy to, to, to give to your project and professional things. Yeah, to receive, to recharge, and then give the energy back. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's talk about Armenian national team a little bit. We had a good match, let's say so, against Turkey. Okay, the result was not good, but in my opinion, we did our best. Uh, your opinion is interesting for me. How uh, did you see our game and uh, how you evaluate our chances in the qualifying group? Again, I said before, what is very important for me and what I'm very happy to see and to, 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 to analyze in Armenian football is since Mr. Armen Melikbekian is here at the head of the federation with Artur Azarian, with all, all the things that they put in the, as a project, which is again a long-term vision project, I think is great. They bring people from outside, they bring knowledge, they did work for the youth teams and now we are seeing the results because actually maybe we don't have big stars. The biggest player of Armenia unfortunately doesn't play for national team, which I think is very sad, but again I don't know exactly the reason, but without having stars, we are having, as you say, decent team and decent playing system and style, which is important and which is, I think, the fruit, the consequence of the hard work made during the four or five last year. So it's good. Now, uh, I think we have to work more. So hopefully there will be more initiative like us, more people working for the youth people of Armenia, more infrastructure. And this is what is happening now. So I'm pretty confident. It's just the only thing is it takes time. So in a few years, hopefully, we're going to be even better. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, what we are waiting for. And the last question, would you like to add something, maybe in Armenian? And like, uh, because I know you can firmly finish our conversation in Armenian also. Well, as I told you, because I just arrived today in Armenia, the first days is uh, kind of hard for me to, to switch, <laughs> switch my, uh, my brain. Next week, I will be only speaking in Armenian, but... Uh, Ce inch care am asem? Şad, ies amen an cam vor galisem Hayastan şad urachem. As yere xanere gdesne, as potential gdesne, mararat people. Amen inch urachem. Ies uzumem vor Hayastan mi kit şavli ujer galni, avli urach, avli love, bright future unenal. So again, just happy for that and hope uh, hope we will uh, participate with our little proportion to, to, to this. 
Thank you for this. Thank you for your time that you spend with us. And uh, thank you for everything you do for Armenian football. Merci, Shadla. Merci. Այս կանով ավարտում ենք հերտական սպորդ զրույցը, մեր հյուրներ հայտնի սպորտային իրավաբան, սարդերապատ վուտբոլային ակոմբի նախագասևան կարյանը կհանդիպենք։